This is the Sri Lanka Broadcasting Corporation, the news edited by Lal Mallavarachi, assisted by Sanjay, and read by Geethanjali Ramanaika. The headlines, the cabinet decides to maintain a $50 fee for 30-day visit to Isa. The second meeting of the Sri Lanka-UK strategic dialogue to be held in Colombo. Imports and exports within the first quarter of this year indicate a significant increase. India-Sri Lanka ferry service is to resume. The fourth plant quarantine center will be opened in Gaul. Foreign news, Russia to hold nuclear drills following threats from the West. Sports, Sri Lanka-Scotland gear up for big final that decides the women's T20 World Cup groups. It was decided yesterday to maintain the existing $50 fee for a 30-day visa for foreigners visiting the country and the free visa service currently offered to citizens of seven countries, that's India, China, Russia, Japan, Malaysia, Thailand and Indonesia, will continue while the visa issuance responsibility will be handled solely by the Department of Immigration and Emigration, the President's Media Division announced yesterday. Since there has been a significant progress in the tourism industry in the country, many parties in the tourism sector have requested President Ranil Vikramsinghe in the past few days to keep the maximum fee of a visa issued when a foreigner arrives in Sri Lanka at the limit of 50 US dollars. They have further pointed out that it is a boost for the future development of the tourism industry. Accordingly, the above decisions were taken after the President explained the matter to the Cabinet. The second meeting of the strategic dialogue between Sri Lanka and the United Kingdom is scheduled to be held in Colombo today at the senior officials level. The meeting will review developments in foreign and security policies as well as progress in the areas of bilateral engagement including trade, investment, tourism, climate change, environment, protection, migration, maritime cooperation, among others. The meeting will also take stock of cooperation by the two countries at international fora, including at the United Nations and Commonwealth. At the second strategic dialogue, the Sri Lanka delegation will be led by Director General Europe and North America of the Minister of Foreign Affairs Shobini Gunasekra. The UK side will be led by Director India and Indian Ocean Directorate at Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office Ben Miller. State Minister Ranjit Simbalapitiya says that imports and exports within the first quarter of this year show a significant increase in comparison to the imports and exports during the same period last year. Imports have increased by 12.9%, while exports mark an increase of 5.7%. Export of consumer goods record an increase of 16.8%. The State Minister further pointed out that this is an indication of the development of the national economy as per the plans of the government focusing on production, tourism and investments. This news broadcast comes to you from the Sri Lanka Broadcasting Corporation. The passenger ferry service between Nagapattinam in India and Kanke Santhare near Jaffna in the northern province of Sri Lanka, which was launched in October 2023 by the Shipping Corporation of India, will resume next Monday tentatively. The ferry service will be operated by a private operator selected by the SCI in consultation with the government. In order to make the service affordable and attractive for passengers, India has decided to bear the cost towards relevant charges and operating costs at Nagapattinam port to the tune of over 25 million rupees per month for a period of one year. Similarly, Sri Lanka has reduced the deviation tax currently charged to passengers leaving the island by passenger vessels and ships. It would be recalled that India has also extended a grant assistance of 63.65 million US dollars to Sri Lanka for the rehabilitation of the KKS Harbour, which was earlier envisaged to be undertaken under a line of credit. This is in keeping with India's strong commitment to Sri Lanka's economic recovery and its march towards progress and prosperity, along with and in close collaboration with India. In the future, connectivity with Sri Lanka will be further enhanced through electricity grid interconnection, two-way multipurpose pipeline and setting up a land connectivity economic corridor. 
the planned quarantine service was limited to Colombo so far. Because of this, the people in the north, east, south and central provinces had to come to Colombo to get planned quarantine services. Therefore, we, they have to spend a lot of money, time and effort to get the quarantine services. The people had complained to the presidential secretariat that they were in great difficulty to send specially plant and plant-related products to foreign countries through the postal service. Paying attention to this situation, the Presidential Secretariat opened three new regional centers to expand the plant quarantine services at a regional level as per the instructions of the President Ranil Vikram Singha. Accordingly, in addition to Colombo Central Post Office, these branches were previously opened in Jaffna and Kandy Post Offices. And that ends Local News for Now. The main news story is brought to you by Siddha Lepa 1,942 Grama Nildari officers will be recruited into public service from tomorrow. Letters of appointment to the new officials will be presented under the patronage of President Ryan Rikram Singha and Prime Minister Dinesh Gunadana at the Temple Trees tomorrow. The Home Affairs Ministry released the names of 1,942 applicants who qualified for the courtly training based on the results of the examination and the interviews held for recruitment to the third grade Grama Nildari office post yesterday. Home Affairs Minister Ashok Priyanta said that the names of all the appointees have been published on the website www.moha.gov.lk. And that was the main news story. The main news story was brought to you by Siddha Lepa Vedamatna. Moving on to watchlight this morning, while issuing a heat index forecast until this evening, it has been indicated that the temperature experienced by the human body is forecast to rise to the extreme caution level, the Natural Hazard Early Warning Center of the Meteorology Department said. As per the latest report, 12 districts, including those in the northern, north, central and eastern provinces, Alves as well as the Kurunagala and Monaragala districts have been identified as areas experiencing extreme heat caution levels. It is projected that the temperature reaching caution levels will rise in 10 districts, including the western, Sabragamwa, southern provinces, as well as the Putlam and Matale districts. And that was Watchlight. Now moving on to world news, the headlines first. Russia to hold nuclear drills following threats from the west. Boeing faces new inquiry over 787 inspection doubts and NASA is to fly a new craft to space station. Russia has started preparations for missile drills near Ukraine, simulating the use of tactical nuclear weapons in response to threats by the West officials. Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov said recent statements by French President Emmanuel Macron and the British Foreign Secretary David Cameron constituted a completely new round of escalation of t- tension. Last week, Mr. Macron refused to rule out potentially deploying French troops should Kiev request them, while Lord Cameron said that Ukraine had the right to use British weapons for strikes within Russia. The U.S. has opened a new inquiry into troubled jet firm Boeing after the company told air safety regulator that it might not have properly inspected its 787 Dreamliner planes. The Federal Aviation Administration, FAA, said it would look into whether staff had falsified records. It said Boeing was re-inspecting all 787 jets still on the manufacturing line. Boeing will be forced to develop an action plan to address concerns about planes already in service, it added. Two NASA astronauts are due to head for the International Space Station aboard a new spacecraft. Boeing Starliner will blast off the Cape Canaveral in Florida in its first crewed test flight. The mission has been delayed for several years because of setbacks in the spacecraft's development. It is essential it will become the second private firm able to provide new transport to and from ISS alongside Elon Musk's SpaceX. And back to the headlines of the world news. Russia to hold nuclear drills following threats from the West. Boeing faces new inquiry over 787 inspection doubts. And NASA is to fly a new craft to space station. And that ends world news. Development news. 
The Mathura District General Hospital introduced its latest addition, a cutting-edge CT scanner worth 200 million rupees, which is poised to help reduce the backlog of patients. The unveiling ceremony held recently was graced by the presence of guests including Minister Dr. Ramesh Patirana, capable of conducting 40 to 50 CT scan tests daily. With the potential for expanded capacity in the future, it promises to significantly reduce the backlog of patients awaiting CT scanner examinations. And that was Development News. Moving on with sports news. Sri Lanka and Scotland will battle it out in the final of the ICC Women's T20 World Cup Qualifier 2024 at the Sheikh Zayed Stadium in Abu Dhabi. After confirming their spots in the ICC Women's T20 World Cup 2024 in Bangladesh last later this year, Sri Lanka and Scotland will face each other in the final of the tournament in Abu Dhabi today. The match also decides which groups the two teams will fall into at the big event later this year. Australia, India, New Zealand, Pakistan are in Group A, while South Africa, England, the West Indies and hosts Bangladesh form Group B, as revealed in the fixtures announcement earlier this week. And that was Sports News. Go the all-new NSP Ithrumitru account, NSP I am, a plan for your dream. Business News, sponsored by National Savings Bank, the safest place for your money. A delegation led by State Minister of Investment Promotion Dilum Amunugama participated in the Hanover Messe 2024 in Hanover, Germany last month. This is the first time that Sri Lanka had officially participated in the Hanover Messe, which is considered to be the world's leading industrial trade fair. This year's edition of Hanover Messe was held from the 22nd to the 26th of April 2024. And that was Business News. Business News. Sponsored by National Savings Bank, the safest place for your money. Go ekatiana youth ticket, life ticket, change ticket, near meta set penna. As for again, then the Puina, have a carana. Youth ticket, near meta set penna, friendship better menna. The all new NSB Ithrumitru account, NSB I am, a plan for your dream. On to economic news, President of the Asian Development Bank, Masatsugu Asakawa, says the bank is waiting for Sri Lanka to complete its debt restructuring among the bilateral donors to explore ways and means to help Sri Lanka. He added that in terms of the debt restructuring exercise that ADB Bank thinks it is very important that every bilateral donor country and major private creditors join this exercise in very transparent manner. Azakawa said once this process is complete, the ADB would explore ways to help Sri Lanka further. And that was economic news. Weather report. An enhancement of showery condition over most parts of the island is expected during the next few days. Showers or thunder showers will occur at several places in the western, Sabragamo, central, northwestern, Uwa and eastern provinces and in the Gaul and Mathura district after 2 p.m. Showers or thunder showers may occur at a few places elsewhere during the afternoon or night. Showers may occur over the coastal areas of Putlam to Hambantata via Colombo and Gaul during the morning too. Fairly heavy showers, about 50 millimeters, are likely at some places in the western, Sabragamo and Uwa provinces and in the Gaul and Mathura districts. Misty conditions can be expected at some places in the central and Sabragamo provinces during the morning. Well, that was the weather report and prior to concluding this news broadcast, the headlines once again. The Cabinet decides to maintain a $50 fee for 30-day visit visa. The second meeting of the Sri Lanka-UK strategic dialogue to be held in Colombo. Imports and exports within the first quarter of this year indicate a significant increase. India-Sri Lanka ferry service is to resume. Further plant quarantine centre, the fourth fourth plant quarantine center will be opened in Gaul. Russia to hold nuclear drills following threats from the West. In sports, Sri Lanka, Scotland gear up for big final that decides women's T20 World Cup groups. And with that, we end this news broadcast from the Sri Lanka Broadcasting Corporation and handing on the microphone back to Soundi Thaum on the other side. Good morning, Soundi, and it's over to you.